Who did you fear more, your mother or your father? My mother. Really? My father, he wacky. My mother taught you through it. You have to stay in the house. You have to do. She used to love to play cards. Mm-hmm. Now, when my father would punish us, we'd all have to stay in the house. But when he went to sleep, he was gone, so she let <laughs> us go out. But when she felt like playing cards at night, all of a sudden, the punishment wasn't that we couldn't go out at the yeah. time that she let us out before because she wanted to play cards. So we'd all have to sit there and play cards, so we weren't going nowhere. You know, it was pretty ironic. So yeah. I'm glad we brought that up. Now, a lot of people who have a history of violence, violent behavior, um, acts of aggression, they tend to come from households where that was something that was done to them or they, they saw that they witnessed it. You know, kids are like sponges. I'll give you a funny scenario. I had nine. Mm-hmm. Seven boys, two girls. Can you imagine how it is in a house? All right? Trying to eat, yeah. <laughs> Trying to eat. Yeah, you have to get there like a dog going to get to his treat, quit his tray. But what happens is, one time, a friend of mine invited me over to his house for dinner. And I think he lived, we lived on Providence Street. I think he lived on Summer Street. It was so close to us. Hmm. And I told my mother, father, they said, yeah, go ahead. So when I went to the house, we're sitting there and everybody, how they started off when they were, you know, just general talking, like we're sitting around here. And then they says, well, it's almost time to eat. Now, this is around like 5.30. It's normal time, yeah. right? So, uh. We all get around the table, and they say, uh, who wants to lead off in the prayer? I said, oh, 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 what? <laughs> Foreign you know? territory for you. <laughs> yeah, so, and then after that, they would say, would you pass the potatoes, please? Or this, that, you know, you know, so I spent, that was good. It was good. It was, they were really good people. And uh, I go home, and I say, Ma, she said, how did it go? I said, there's something wrong with them people. <laughs> she said, what? Why do you say that? I said, because they were saying a prayer. They were saying Please pass this. It pass was that. it was she order. Says, she says, "Son, there was nothing wrong with them. That's a normal family. That's how that's a normal family." You guys are like in a kennel, all animals running uh, up to the table says, trying to fend for yeah. yourselves. God bless my mother. She's my hero. I don't know how she did it. Uh, and then put that's a my lot. father too. I don't know how she did it. Nine kids. So how was the relationship with you and your father? Were you guys close? Me and my father were the closest because my father loved sports, and I was the athlete of mm-hmm. everybody. The most uh, the the boys. And, yeah. uh, uh, so he took me everywhere, Boston games, all that stuff. And uh, so, yeah, I think he favored me the most because of that. And besides, I stuck by him. I, you know, I wanted to go to work when I wanted to hang with him and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, and so my older brothers they were already up roaming around, creating discontent and havoc. What was the age difference between you and your siblings? Were you far apart or were you guys relatively close? As far as... Older, the closest one to me was my brother Harold, which all my yeah, six brothers have passed away. Uh, he was three years older than me. Mm-hmm. Now I had my younger brothers. They were one of them was a year younger than me, but he got killed by a, a drunk driver. Oh, Jesus. So yeah, but it wasn't really the guy's fault. I mean, he was speeding. Yeah, but my brother just. Ran out and my brother Harold was sent to the store mm. and he followed him wherever he went. As soon as he saw him leave, the gate was open. He didn't shut the gate and went. He took off right after. Right on uh, where the junctures, <clears throat> we go to Hartford Avenue and, and uh, Pacasset. Yeah, yeah. We, there'd be that gas, Gulf gas station. There was two big three decker houses then mm-hmm. in the back. Tiger Boletto. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> Gavin Boletto and my father were good friends. We lived at houses next door. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, they were older, but we still grew up together. And he saw that and he just ran out in the street. Didn't even look. Well, yeah, so he ran out in between the cars, and even though the guy might have been drunk, I mean, but if he had a license or not, you know, I didn't really blame that guy after when I really got older and found the story out, because I did a lot of research on yeah. it. Yeah. You know? Now, how old were you when this happened? Uh, I think I was five, and he was four. Or well, he was five, I was four. I was in the middle, I think. That's so young. Yeah, well, you know, then as we went on, and uh, then I had another brother, 21 years old, on his birthday, was getting drunk. My mother went to track him now because she didn't want him to turn out like us. <laughs> yeah, she, but, and somebody told him, uh, Bobby, your mother's outside. So he took off to him. Hey, you know what Mess Street is? Yeah. Coming down Oneyville, if you look, <clears throat> you see the green light bar. Right next to it's a big yep. empty parking lot. Well, up the street on Mess Street, he was in a house. There was a house party. Mm. So when he told him that, he ran out the back and coming home, he ran through the lot. There was a big tractor trailer making a turn. Uh, he goes up to it. You know, you bang on it when you're a kid. You bang yeah. on truck. Well, he did that, and he kicked the tire, but it caught his foot, pulled him under. Jesus. Yeah, so and, uh, 
that didn't go well. <sighs> so, uh, so you've had a, even at a young age, you've had a lot of like death and kind of tragedy around you. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, we have to go through it. 